The weeks leading up to Christmas break can be a little crazy. And it was about eight or nine years ago when I decided that I wanted to embrace the chaos and have a little more fun with my students. In this video, I'm sharing some simple ideas for these last few weeks of school before break. Welcome back, I'm Rachel Vincent, and I share tips on how to run an effective and efficient classroom so that you can get more done and still have time to teach. So quick disclaimer before we get into the nitty gritty of this video, Christmas can be a touchy subject. So I want to just say that this works for my students. I have asked all my parents what holidays they celebrate in December, and I work at a school where the majority of students celebrate Christmas, and so this fits well with the community of students I teach. So before you go and just use all of these ideas in your classroom, make sure you have uh, checked in with your parents and students and know what holidays they celebrate. And uh, you can also make this winter themed so that you can still use these ideas and just not call it Christmas. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get down to some of the ideas I have. So December, I don't know for you guys, but December at my school's schools, I only teach at one, but I've taught it several over the years, but they are always filled with all these extra activities. Kids are already excited, knowing they're about to go on break, knowing the holidays are coming, they're doing extra things with their families. And so just that sort of level of excitement and chaos can um, sometimes be overwhelming as a teacher when we still have curriculum to get to, but also if we ignore it, it can become overwhelming. So this way helps me sort of to, to embrace that chaos. And I really wanted just to make sure that I was being intentional about enjoying these activities and these extra things with my students. Because being with kids during Christmas time really is magical. So that's when I came up with this countdown to break. Now I am not counting down because I can't wait to be on break, which I mean, I can't, but this isn't really a way of saying we're counting down to the end. It's really just a way of having something to look forward to each day. So when I first started this, I actually did a 12 day countdown and I used a muffin tin and I'll try to insert a picture of it right here. And I put the little, folded up the little activities and put them in each tent and then covered it with tissue paper. And then we like punched the tissue paper each day and pulled it out. And that was a really fun way to do it. But then of course, like we know December's already busy. I wanted something that would be a little more, not permanent, but something I could reuse each year. So I made it um, a printable that I could print out and I used a bulletin board, an extra bulletin board that I had. And then uh, when I moved classrooms, I didn't have that bulletin board anymore. So I ended up putting it on poster board. And so I saved this poster board each year and um, I can reuse it each year. After doing it a couple years, I realized that I tend to do the same activities each year, uh, maybe adding a few new ones, but I don't always do them in the same order. So I wanted a way to where I could reuse that and so what I did was uh, each activity is laminated so that it will last year to year. And then I ended up Velcroing the numbers onto the back of them. That way, if this activity needs to happen a different day, I just have to change the number and add it to my countdown. So the first thing I do when planning out all of these activities is I will pull out the December calendar, my school calendar, my lesson planning calendar, and just kind of see what we have going on those three weeks. And then what I like to do is plan the easier activities on the days that are busier. So for me, one of the first activities I always do when we come back from break is we just decorate the tree in our classroom and put up the decorations in our classroom. So I don't like to start the first day back crazy, but I want them to feel like excited. And so I do something simple. If I know we're going to have an assembly or if there's just a lot of lessons and the lessons have a lot in them and I really don't have a whole lot of time to do 
something extra, I'll plan something as simple as a coloring page or read a book with a partner. Something simple that doesn't take up extra time that already fits easily into what we're doing that day. Other times it's just a simple reward like extra recess, no shoe pass, or it's something that I was already planning on doing like making ornaments for students to give to their parents and so I make that one of our activities just because I already know I'm going to do it. I can plan which day it's going to happen and it's just something for the students to look forward to. And sometimes the activity is as simple as a taking a math lesson that I'm already doing and adding some holiday flair into it or adding an extra art project or just real simple things that don't take up a whole lot of extra time that I can easily integrate into my lessons. The other thing I want to stress and make sure that I don't do is turn this into a behavior award. This is not behavior based. These are activities that I am going to do no matter what behavior happens. Now, if a situation arises where a student can't handle the activity, then they might have to have a timeout from the activity or not do the activity anymore. And that's really just based on in the moment, but I don't use it as a, if we behave one day, we get the activity the next. We get the activity no matter what, and I plan accordingly. Now I will sometimes, uh, like at the end of the day, if they do a nice job packing up, say that we can flip our card over early and find out what tomorrow's activity. I might, I might use that, not always, um, but it's not based on whether or not they get the activity. It's just whether or not they get to see the activity ahead of time or if they have to wait till tomorrow. So I will sometimes add that into our afternoon routine where if we do a nice job packing up and we're not crazy and loud because that time of the day tends to get crazy and loud regardless the time of the year. So I kind of will throw that in there of just flipping our card over ahead of time. But we always flip the card and we always um, do the activity because as we get towards the end of the week, like hopefully my students are watching and if you are, don't ruin the surprise for your classmates. Love you. Um, our last one is just simple. It's our Christmas party. The kids know we're having that Christmas party no matter what. Um, but I'm not going to add something extra to a Christmas party because that's the enjoyment. That's the activity for that day. So that is always our last one on our countdown. I have this countdown for free in my TPT store and you can find the link for that below. It comes with all the pieces to make the countdown. You I have all the ideas that I use plus blank ones for you to add your own ideas. It has all the numbers and it also comes in a winter theme if you choose not to use Christmas. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.